what is happening YouTube Cowboy here and we are back with another Heroes of the Storm strategy showcase and today we are taking a look at this adorable little panda Lili the range support now Lili is probably one of the easiest characters in Heroes of the Storm to play um, in all honesty she's probably the easiest just because her abilities are so simple and some of them you basically just have to press the button and they go to their targets you don't even have to you know there's no skill shots you basically just run around mashing buttons just like doop -a -doop -a -doo, just hitting them and she's really powerful still. So, Lily is very effective at healing. At the same time, if played aggressively, she can do a hell of a lot of damage. So, I play a very, very aggressive Lily. So, you guys are going to get a chance to see what that's like. Um, the couple of games I've played, and I know this sounds absolutely crazy, but I very frequently come close to topping hero damage, if not topping it, as a Lily. And this is on top of doing like 30, 40,000 healing easily. So, either way, let's take a look at our hero info. First up, Healing Brew. Heal a nearby ally. Now, Healing Brew is very simple. You basically just press the button, and whether it's yourself or an ally, anyone who's within the radius, even minions or creeps, it'll toss a little brew over to, and it'll heal them. Pretty simple, right? You just gotta be in the, the radius, and it, it heals them. That's it. Um, next, Cloud Serpent. Summon a serpent to assist an ally. All in all, kind of a lackluster ability. You basically put a little snake on somebody, and it like kind of rides around them and shoots anything that comes near them. Um, the damage on it is fucking terrible, but it is good early on, in my opinion, to help harass a little bit and also just help to protect heroes as they're trying to run. Blinding Wind, probably one of my favorite abilities. Now, Blinding Wind is also very simple. Similar to Healing Brew, when you use it, it's going to send out little mini tornadoes that hit enemies. And the really broken thing about this is that you blind them, making them miss their next two basic attacks. So, as you can imagine, um, maps that are very team fight heavy. Blinding Wind absolutely obliterates teams. I mean, if you throw this out and they have four assassins and all of a sudden they're not hitting their attacks, they're fucking useless. So moving on from there, our final ability, Fast Feet. When struck by enemies, gain movement speed. Just helps you to get away. So, you know, all in all, her talents are, or excuse me, not her talents, but her abilities are very well suited for someone just starting out the game. And it's it's pretty hard to mess up at being Lili. Moving on from there, heroic abilities. Two choices here. Jug of a Thousand Cups, which rapidly heals all your nearby allies, or Water Dragon, which damages and heavily slows the nearest enemy hero. Now, these have very different uses. Obviously, Jug of a Thousand Cups is a healing type ultimate. Water Dragon is a damage and kill secure type ultimate because of the slow. And in all honesty, I'm a bigger fan of Water Dragon, simply because of the fact that Jug of a Thousand Cups is a channeled spell, and with as much CC and knockback and stuns and just all kinds of shit that's in this game, I feel that unless you have a very conservative playstyle, when you pop Jug of a Thousand Cups, usually it's not even going to keep your team alive because any player with half a brain is going to hit you with a CC the second you start casting it. So I usually go for Water Dragon, but either way, let's jump into the match, show you what this crazy little panda can do. She looks like, like I don't know, like a panda had sex with Dora the Explorer or something, and this is what popped out. I know that's completely inappropriate. I apologize for those that are offended, but we're going to smash some shit in with Lily gonna be good like you guys don't even know my Lily is so dirty she's so dirty she smashes everything like people don't even know what to happen when I play Lily they're like shit I can't fuck with this we got a really good team here too Rainer Illidan Tyrande Ooh, and this is a great map for my Lily my Lily gonna smash shit in on this map water dragon to secure those kills and collect those coins nobody fuck with Lily I'm actually getting really hyped to play Lily just because it's been a few days since I've played her. But I'm really, really good at her. So, anyway. Let's do it. Let's get in here. Show you what Lily's capable of. I'm gonna turn some heads. People are gonna be like, what the fuck? Look at that Lily's damage. Lily fucking shit up. Alright, so for our first talent here. Um, honestly, two considerations. You're not going to need Protoss, that's pointless. You're not going to need Timeless Creature, that's pointless. Um, the only two I consider here are going to be Gale Force or Conjurous Pursuit. Now, in theory, Conjurous Pursuit would outright be the better choice because Lili is constantly using ability, so that helps a lot. And Gale Force doesn't hit all that hard, as you can see, 43 damage. Um, whereas this is 22 per attack. So it doesn't help it out all that much. It's already kind of a weak attack, and it's more about the blinding effect. 
Um, I've had really good success with Gale Force, but either way, I'm going to be going for Conjurer's Pursuit simply because on this map, you know, you're constantly hitting camps. So there is a really high chance for me to get all those orbs really, really fast, which will help out quite a bit. Come at me, bro. Watch what happens. Boom. There's the wind. Toss out those gales. We can see little tornadoes coming out. Oh, we're going to secure a kill on there, Lili, I think. Are we? And there's the first kill. So basically, all you really do is keep your W up on whatever the enemy is attacking and just keep spamming Q. You just spam the ever-living shit out of Q and it'll keep healing. And that's all you really need to do with it is just spam it. Spam it, spam it, spam it. There's a Zeratul here. There's a Zeratul here. You wanna fuck with me, Zeratul? You ain't getting away, brah. You ain't getting away, brah. Where do you think you're going? I'm Lily the Great. Missing his attacks. Murden gonna go down. Oh, Murden goes down. You can see, as much as uh, we're being aggressive with our ability usage here, we are burning through our fucking mana really fast. So, Conjurer's Pursuit is gonna help out quite a bit. And honestly, I think the only reason I even consider going Gale Force is because um, the few games that I did go Gale Force, I was that was those are the games where I was topping damage as a Lili. And so in that regard, the little extra 50% helped. But overall, you're much better off with the mana regen just because of how active we, we are fighting. So anytime team fights are going down, hit that E. Making the enemies miss their attacks is crucial to smash and shit in as a Lili. Aside from that, just keep spamming that Q, baby. Keep people healed on up. the region globe. Oh no, I would don't let him get out of there, bro. Never mind, we're gonna fight this. We're fighting this. Ooh. So from here, um, two potential choices you're going to want. You're either going to want to pick up Mass Vortex or you're going to want Lingering Blind. Now, this largely depends on the map. If you know you're going to be fighting a lot of targets frequently, Mass Vortex will help a lot because it hits more targets. If you know it's going to be smaller fights, Lingering Blind is obviously the superior choice. Um, we take Mass Vortex here simply because of the fact that this is a map where you're going to frequently have big team fights going down. People are going to be fighting over the, the chest and the coins and the turn-in, and it'll help us out a lot. So giving that four potential targets on it will be very helpful in our endeavor to eliminate the enemy team. And on top of that, I mean, they have a Merodin, a Vala, a Sonya, a Zeratul. At least three of those targets, the uh, the Sonya, the Zeratul, and the Vala, are very, very effective at doing lots of damage. And as you can see, we are very, very aggressively hitting our globes. Oh no, and one of them went down. I could have saved him, but I didn't. Could have saved him, but I didn't. So we're gonna grab this. Get our mana all the way topped off. It looks like we got pretty much all the camps. Let us capture this mercenary Stay up camp. here. I think the fight's about to go down. I see orbs to pick up here. Yes, get those orbs. Get all the orbs. How many do I got? I got three. Let's get a turn in. Like I said, use Q on cooldown, use your binding wing on cooldown, and everything will be alright. Looks like your enemies two in a row. There's a zero tool. There goes that one. That blinding wind. I really like how it like seeks in on, on your enemies. Get the 
Water Serpent up on him for a little extra damage. Oh, and there it is. So for our next talent, uh, pretty much hands down, I'm going to be going for the good stuff here. Allowing the healing brew to heal over time really will add a nice little bit of healing onto it. You know, as you're getting up front, plus you're going to heal over time. Um, as for the other choices, like I said, I, I tend to avoid Lightning Serpent. I'm not a big fan of it. And repeated healing blues cost less mana. Also, not really going to be necessary here because of the fact that we already have that extra... Um, we have that extra mana regen coming in, so that's useless. And then shake it off, not really needed, you know. We are already so, so just kind of um, resilient as it is with our passive ability to run that we don't really need that ability. Oh, with the Binding Wind to secure the kill. That was sexy, right? That was sexy. How are we looking? Not doing too fucking shabby. I like how aggressive this hill is. He's really, really sticking to his targets. Allowing me to help him out quite a bit. I still want this camp, guys. I still want this fucking camp, guys. So how are we looking right now? Hero damage, not too bad. 5,000. We're the third highest hero damage on our team. It's uh, pretty impressive for a fucking melee. Miss attacks that'll help Illidan get out of there alive. Where do you think you're going? Where are you going, Murden? Oh, ho, ho. Murden goes down. Gotta keep getting the camps. How are we looking? We got a bonus one mana regen per second. That's helpful. But we need more. We need more. Head to this camp, making sure we get the uh, get that globe. Head up to the other camps. All about them globes. We're actually going to help them out. We can turn this around, boys. Fight this shit. Lili's here. Lili's here. Oh, he goes down. Lili don't give a fuck. Heroic Dragon coming out. Here it comes. Boom. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where are you going? Where are you at? Where are you at? Lili 2 OP. I love how aggressive she can be. Like, you can really just run up on everyone's shit, and you're just like, nah, I'm gonna kill you all. Lily, don't fuck around. Them regen globes, baby. How are we looking? We're doing good. We're doing good. Can't quite keep up with uh, the hammer. Actually, I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping up. Even more than Tarande. So even on healing. But honestly, I think an aggressive Lily like this is probably the best way to play it because her healing is just passively good. You know, you just pretty much spam it as long as you have mana. You're getting those heals out. So because of that, um, having her get that extra damage in really does help a lot in team fights and uh blinding win such a game changer in team fights you know making that that illidan or that felstad or whatever the case is start missing their auto attacks like it's it really really hurts the enemy team uh -huh. i got seven i gotta turn this shit in let us capture this mercenary camp <laughs> Oh no, they're focusing me! No, they focused Illidan! Why are you running, Rainer? Why are you running? sieged up and Rainer wasn't like, yeah, I'm scared. That would have been easy mode. Anyway, how are we doing on that? 1.5, that's good. It's coming along. We need to um, keep that keep that building. But when I get it up to an extra, like, two mana per second, 
All right, so for this one, two big choices here. Um, Binding Wind slows targets, which will help to secure kills a little bit. Um, actually, well, no, three big choices, actually. Shrink Ray, very powerful if there's one hero on their enemy team doing a lot of damage. In this case, they're all kind of even. Valor doing a little bit, but not too much. Um, because of the fact that we're likely going to be going for Kung Fu Hustle, I'm going to be grabbing uh, Surging Winds, which, now, basically, the way this works is we get 5% ability power for 8 seconds for every enemy hit by Binding Wind, right? And you can see additional enemies hit, refresh the duration of the buff, and further increase ability power, stacks up to 4 times. So basically it stacks up to where we have an extra 20% ability power, which is pretty significant. Now obviously the only downside of this is that we're going to get that pretty much every single time we drop out a Blinding Wind, because we're going to hit a ton of enemies with it. But the fact of the matter is Blinding Wind has a 10 second cooldown right now, and as you can see this is only 8 seconds. Despite that, once we have our ultimate, that will all change. Oh no, he's got me in the time lock. Basically, the ulti we're picking up here. Kung Fu Hustle abilities, we charge three times as fast when fast feed is active. That's basically going to help us out enough to where uh, the ability power stack that we're going to be getting is going to be fucking huge. We're just about up to that point now where we can really start just, um, you know, really just keep spamming our abilities. We got enough mana regen. We're almost up to, uh, almost up to two mana per second. So our mana sustainability is pretty fucking phenomenal right now. Not quite beating out the Trondae on healing, but we're still doing a pretty damn good job. <laughs> Back this shit, really here. Well, the void prison. No, you piece of shit, Zeratul. So for our next one, um, Healing Brew heals two allies with longer cooldown. No alternative here, to be honest. Um, you know, also gives Cloud Surf when you cast an ally. Like I said, not a big fan of that. Healing Cleanse, removing disables and gain movement speed, just too situational. You know, it's not something that's going to always be up. And then um, fast feet stronger and low health. Like, if we're going to die, that little bit of extra speed probably isn't going to save us anyway. So I always go for heal two allies just because that effectively just doubles your healing output. I mean, it adds well, 1.5 seconds, and the cooldown by default is 3 seconds. So we get like, you know, a 50% increase on, uh, on the time it takes to get that off. And in exchange for that, we're getting double the healing output. Like, really, it's just, it's no contest here. Can't kill me. Can't kill me. I got the healing. I got you, hammer. Don't give up hope, bro. Oh, yeah, bitch! Yeah, you didn't think Lily could do this, did you? Get the fuck down! That healing, though. You think you can open they just got Check shit on so hard right there. Four of them for a hammer. That was awesome. That was so fucking awesome. Seems we've reached an accord. Let's show your enemies. I jolly good time. How's our regen up to? Right, 1.75. This will put us up to two. Looks like a hero has quit the fight. 
Buddy, where you think you're going? Uh oh, that's slow. That's slow. That's slow. Boom! Down goes Zeratul. Get the fuck out of my house. That's what you get, Water Dragon Man. It's a fucking massive slow. 70% for four seconds. That is huge. Huge amounts of slow potential there. Looks like that hero is back for more. Got eight freaking coins. Jesus Christ. How are we doing? Damn, it's Tyrande still out healing me. Can't quite get ahead of her. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. The hero damage, I'm not gonna be able to beat out the hammer, but 20,000. I'm doing more than Rainer, which is kind of sad for him because of the fact that he's a freaking assassin, but. Kill the Valor. Why did no one want to come kill the Valor with me? I figured we'd shit all over the Valor. So there's a little, um, no, if you see the little leaf on top of people's heads, that means that they are within range of your healing crew, so keep that in mind. Like I said at this point, Kung Fu Hustle! So the other choices here are Bolt of the Storm, you don't really need that mobility because of the fact that we have fast feet. And Summon Two Dragons is a decent ability, but all in all, I feel that it's overshadowed by Kung Fu Hustle simply because when one dragon goes out, there's that delay before the second one's going to come out. And I like to use Dragon to help secure single kills. Like when I attempted to kill that Valor right there, obviously I'd never be able to do that myself. <clears throat> but if I had had a single other hero with me, you know, Illidan, Hammer, anybody, we would have had that in the bag easily. And that's what I like it for, and more often than not, when you, when you see something like that, it's going to be that one enemy hero that's solo, not a bunch of enemy heroes. So, you know, it's better overall just to have fun with the hustle, because that's going to help you out more in the fights. Let's get the coins. Drop this shit, man. Oh, he time locked me, you fucking bitch. Oh my god, Zeratul. That shit. He was done for, man. The water dragon was fucking bringing down the pain on his ass. Hey, we got healing now. 23,000, we're topping the healing. Damn it, Raider. Raider is like the one derpy guy on our team. Oh shit, never mind. Looks like boss finished things up. So overall, ending up not too bad. Topping healing at 23,000. Which you can see there, Lili was more focused on healing. You can see her damage quite a bit less, and she managed out healing, but even then, only by a small margin, and on top of that, a relatively high amount of both siege and hero damage. So, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed watching some aggressively play. Like I said, she really is a lot of fun when played aggressively, and um, 
In all honesty, if Zeratul didn't have Void Prison, I think we would have ended up securing quite a few more kills that round on top of everything else. So either way, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will see you next time with more Heroes of the Storm.